<laughs> so, does anyone have a question to kick off? Yeah. Uh, DKA, sick patient, insulin bolus, IV sub Q or no bolus before you start a drip. You want to kick us off, Rich? Or are you going to do Yeah, so your question is so. The question is, we have a patient who is in DK, they're sick, they want to know if we're going to give an insulin bolus, no bolus, or what was it? Or sub-Q versus IV bolus. Sub-Q versus IV. If you're going to give a bolus. Right. Um, so are we talking pediatric or adult? Adult. All right, so, so the question is about an adult patient. So in my practice, um, assuming, um, assuming that it's an adult patient, I'm still giving an insulin bolus. I'm given an IV insulin bolus, and the reason that I'm given IV insulin bolus over subcutaneous uh, uh, administration is that the DKA patient tends to be pretty dehydrated. So how reliable is that sub-Q insulin being absorbed in the patient who is peripherally clamped down? I don't know, I feel like it's, it's, it's not very reliable. So as that patient continues to get hydrated, then you have a depot of insulin that's now being taken up on top of the insulin drip that we're going to start later on. So that would be my answer to that question. And I'm with Rich. I would act, I actually like the IV bolus. There's not great literature that you definitely have better outcomes with this. Um, but the sick folks, you're not reliably getting um, sub-Q insulin to them. Is there any literature? There's a little bit. shows that you get better outcomes, but I didn't think there was any. I don't think that there is. It could be, it could be dogma. There's new literature about no bolus at all. Yeah. Yes, they could go into the drip. Yeah, a lot of people in kids, yeah. in kids <coughs> particularly, there's probably evidence that it harms yep. people. Um, in adults, I think that there's kind of equipoise that it, it's not superior one way or the other. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I think a lot of that is the way that I was trained. Um, I think that if you went straight to, um, if you went straight to IV drip and fluid boluses on top of that, I think you're probably going to be fine. Fine. So. Also, don't forget to check your K, too, right? So that, that's the thing that, that often gets forgotten, is if you don't know the K, you really shouldn't be giving insulin at all, because you can really kill someone quick with, with uh, changes in the potassium. And the IV fluids are much more important than insulin. That took me a long time to realize. I thought, oh, we're fixing them with the insulin, because that's what they were out of for three days, and that's how they got into this mess. No, it's really the fluids that are the, the real emergent first hour or two of treatment. Yeah. Um, and then later on. So much less than four, four or less, I start potassium with my insulin, okay? And the bolus you give is point, I mean, is one per, point one per? Point one units per kg. Okay. Dan, are you the same thing you're doing, you drop. But a lot of faculty wouldn't give a bolus. Okay. Right, it's totally fine if you don't bolus. Yeah. Like, that's okay. Like, you should never have a MICU okay. guy yelling at you for not. Absolutely. It causes traumatic swings. <clears throat> so you go from 600 to 200. Mm -hmm over a very short period of time. There's not, there's not a lot of supporting evidence that it's bad for you for adult population, but uh, there's certainly evidence that suggests it's not good for kids. Um, I don't necessarily think there's a big advantage to giving a lowest person in my, um, my personal preference. I think a lot of national elections, that seems to be a trend. That's what I thought, yeah. Yep. So the other thing that I would do too on the drip I usually cap at about five units per hour, right? Five units, because the reason for that is that the, you know, rather than using the point one, uh, the point one dosing, is that our nurses are very busy, all right? And we're talking about big swings in, in uh, we're talking about big swings in glucose, so it's possible that our nurses may not be following that glucose as, as close as we'd like them to. So I usually cap at about five units, um, uh, just to avoid missing that electrolyte abnormality that we created or that hypoglycemic episode. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't hear exactly what you said, but I believe most of the textbooks recommend starting potassium when the K gets down to five. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I do. Like, you, you want them to be on the high normal, if, especially if you're using aggressive insulin. So. Yeah. For your fluid, for your fluid bolus going before you start insulin, are you have you switched over to using lactated ringers, or are you always using no one's I have very annoyingly. Like you, you may have noticed, if you're working with me, that I use LR much more often than normal saline. Uh, the problem with normal saline is it probably makes a mild acidosis, 
through chemistry that's too complex for me to understand. <laughs> uh, and so LR is less likely to generate as severe of an acidosis. And so I think it's fairly elegant. You just have to make sure that you're checking your chemistry panel real close because there are other things that you're not used to having that are part of LR. Yeah. So there is some reasonable evidence out there to suggest too that you have um, uh, prolonged, and this is not so much, it's not so much of an application to, to DKA, Plus, they have pre-existing renal failure. I don't know, a lot of these people actually do have some pre-existing renal disease, right? So there is prolonged uh, renal replacement therapy with normal saline, increased incidence of uh, AKI with normal saline, and it's due to the hyperchloremia. So I'm, I don't know if I'd necessarily go straight to LR, but if their chloride's high, I would. So follow the chloride, at least that's my rule of thumb. How often should we be checking the sugar in the electrolytes? as often as you can convince the nurses to do it. <laughs> uh, like, like we said before, when you give that bolus of insulin, it is a, a real problem to know what they're going to do because it, it really can swing. I think everyone that's done this for a while has seen that like, person drop their sugars by 500 points real quick. And that's the main danger of the bolus is that it can really swing things wildly. All right, so I think we have two X's. Move on. All right, moving on. Or you said it can swing what wildly? The sugars. Yeah. For, me it's, for me, it's Q1 hour. Yep, up Q1 front. Hour. Q1 hour up front. At, at the most, Q2 BMPs. All right, next question.